Hey guys, Miss Sewing here with a video lesson. This is our first lesson in unit number four, which is all about the 1970s. So today we'll be talking about the presidency of Jimmy Carter and focusing on the Iranian hostage crisis. First, as always, we'll start with our essential question, which is that question you should be able to answer by the end of today's video. And that is, what was the effect of US actions in the Middle East during Jimmy Carter's presidency? We'll start off, of course, with uh, an image here of Mr. Carter. Jimmy Carter was a Democrat and he was president from 1977 until 1981. So you'll notice he only got one term, which is four years as president, and we will see why pretty soon. So a quick map, we're gonna be looking at US policy in the Middle East today. So when I talk about the Middle East, this is the area I am referring to. We'll be looking at countries like Iran here, Israel, and Egypt today. All right, so number one, we're gonna start with the energy crisis. And the energy crisis was caused um, by a few things. So first off, we got an acronym here that I want to explain. The acronym is OPEC, which stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, which is just a fancy way of saying a group of countries that have a lot of oil and they sell that oil to other countries. So that group came together and they put an embargo on selling oil to the United States, meaning they decided to ban selling oil to America at the time. And as you can see here, that creates some problems for us at home. It led to a huge gas shortage, right? If we're not getting any oil coming into the country, well, then we can't fill up people's cars. So you can see here, people are in line waiting to fill up, but they're limited to only a certain amount of gasoline um, to keep supplies um, available. You see another photo here of someone who owns a gas station just putting up a sign that says, hey, I'm sorry, we're out of gas, we don't have enough, and I can't sell you any. This creates a lot of problems because we rely on gasoline. We need it to get from one place to another. All right, number two, we'll do the one positive thing for Jimmy Carter is one success here, and that was the Camp David Accords. So, Camp David Accords was an agreement between Egypt and Israel. Um, these are their two leaders here um, on the photograph in front of you with Carter here in the middle. And he was able to negotiate this historic agreement between these two countries that were very often at war with each other. And they were actually at war for 30 years before this agreement to stop fighting each other was passed. And so uh, this was kind of the one big success that Carter had bringing these two, you know, historically conflicting countries to the table and agreeing to put down their weapons. But as I hinted, it's not going to stay positive for too long. Let's talk about the Iranian hostage crisis. So what was that? Well, we got to start with the guy here on your screen. You're looking at the Shah of Iran at the time. Shah basically means the king, the guy in charge. And the Shah was ill. He was sick. He had cancer. And the United States made a decision to let him into America to get treatment for his cancer. And the result of this was a deep angering of people in Iran, some of which were saying that the Shah committed really terrible crimes against them. And they wanted to put him on trial. And here he is able to kind of leave the country and leave the justice system and get health care. Um, many people in Iran said that the Shah was basically keeping all the wealth for himself and letting people starve, letting people go hungry. Um, and definitely a very tense situation. And so these tensions kept brewing. And protests were happening outside of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. The U.S. Embassy is a government building where Americans are, are working, um, even though this is in another country. And so you can see, I mean, the photo doesn't 
um, show you everything here, but you can see a protest is happening outside of the embassy where the Americans are in Iran. And there's a, we have some signs here and some angry looking people and the tensions hit a breaking point. And you can see that these, these students, actually these are college students, start to jump the fence and they take over the building and they take people hostage to try and force the United States to send the Shah back to Iran and make, um, make right of the situation. And as you can see, guys, these Americans were held for 444 days, over a year being held um, in this building, which is of course a very long time. And so as you can imagine, this destroys Carter's presidency. He tries and tries, but he just cannot get Iran to agree to release the hostages. Um, they try military operations. He tries being nice to them and negotiate and nothing he does works. And eventually Iran says, hey, we'll give you guys the hostages once Carter is no longer president. And on the very day that Ronald Reagan wins the election and takes the oath of office um, in 1981, an hour later, Iran puts all those people um, on a plane and sends them back. And uh, Reagan is credited on day one of getting the hostages returned. So all in all, Carter, not the most successful president. We see his actions in the Middle East um, result in uh, not too many victories for him. He's got maybe one win in uh, the three that I was showing you today. Um, and that's it, guys.